All right then, let's go again. In Australia. Big send time. And this is the fast one. Well, that So far, not so good. I blame you, Felix. I was thinking about wipes. Too much gay for my one brain cell, couldn't focus on driving. Also, it's night and I don't know any of these tracks. Oh, they put f***ing houses! Be a bit miffed if you're trying to sleep and there's just fucking Going past you every... Every five minutes and then one just fucking comes into your house. Oh, sorry! Sorry, old bean. Crash into the living room. Good I might. How's it going? Strength. By the way, um, I'm doing idiot proof testing on our code. It's not going very well. Turns out, Windows users don't have Python installed. Which provides a bit of a roadblock. And the last message I got was a few minutes ago after saying I'll just go install Python or if you've got Windows subsystem for Linux install for some reason Python's probably in there um, it's a friend who I know knows how to do that sort of thing and will have at some point installed Python and ran Python code and probably written Python code but um, she sent me back now the question is where did it put the file I assume it made with the results 
Which, um... Well, that's not the greatest of answers. Yeah, but in theory, Python... Oh, I fucking know why. I've just realised why. You ha yeah, you have to put a scan F at the end. You put input dot. You put input. Open bracket. Close bracket. Because otherwise the IDA IDLE closes and you can't see the results. I forgot about that bit. Yes. Yeah, I don't know, dumping stuff to a file might be the best thing to do. Just yeeting everything to a file instead of... Terminal, like... Because can we yeet everything to a file? Can we yeet ev Can we make a fake file that's just a RAM file? Yeet everything to that and then only save it at the end. I don't know. Fuck it. Fuck it. I don't know. Because that involves like actual real programming where we'd have to make it so that the because you either have to make the decision that it's going to overwrite the last file every time. You have to make sure you've actually got write permissions. Because otherwise the program is just going to fail because the fucking Windows user ain't going to know that they've got write permissions or not. I don't know if I've got bloody write permissions. I was more thinking... So dump everything to a te to a file, and then right at the end, um, ask, do you want to save this to a file? Yes or no. We can all if if the file is in RAM, then we can dump the file to the console output, show them. Don't ask, just do it. Fuck it, go for it then. I'd still dump it to the console output as well, though, because I want it as console output. Yeah, I guess change every every line of print to file dot append. I guess start off by clearing the file that's already there. If you want to be fancy. Ask. Ask nicely. You already have a file. Are you sure you want to do it? And then it's just a matter of dumping every every line instead of printing it. Dumping every line that we write out into file. And then uh, dumping the file at the end.
what do you think? My first, of course, my first instinct is going to be to run it in the terminal. How else do you run Python files on Linux? Double clicking them by default will open it in the fucking con um, text editor. My default opening. And on Windows, my default opening has always been the text editor. Even if I've had Python installed, it's the Python text editor. If you just double click it, it always opens in the IDLE Python text editor and then you just hit F5 or whatever it is to run it. The difference between being, I guess, uh, But adding input to the last line. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it tries... Well... Yeah, if you've got Python Idle installed, it probably tries to open it in the editor by default. And otherwise, it'll probably try to open it in Notepad or Internet Explorer. One of the two. Or it tries to open it with GitHub Copilot or some bullshit AI these days if it's Windows 11. Now I won't try to open it in Edge because Edge might have a half assed chance of actually doing something with it. I wouldn't be surprised if there is a fully featured um, Python interpreter inside of Chromium to be honest with you. Just sitting around. In theory, we could ship packages, you know. Yeah, Jupyter Hub wouldn't work because you've got the package. Just ship packages. It's not hard to package Python. You just end up with an absolutely enormous file size because uh, you have to ship the entire Python interpreter library. How to actually install and run this goddamn thing on... It would genuinely be, if you are on Windows, here is a massive guide. If you are on Linux, honestly, if you don't know how to do this and you're on Linux, uh, there's a problem, lad. I have seen, there are, it is hilarious, when you go to programming places and you go to compile a program and you, you're reading through the readme and you have to scroll like four or five pages of Windows documentation and I used to think when I first started using Linux, oh with all the Windows users they get all the good documentation and the Linux users get shit documentation and it's just, uh, it, ju it basically just says use make and that's it. Slowly but surely I have learned that effectively the answer is just use make. Sometimes they'll give you a list of dependencies, but the danger of giving a list of dependencies is that you don't actually know what dependencies you need because you don't remember what you installed while you were making it and you don't know what's actually installed.
Yeah, install, like, compiling anything on Windows, you have to fucking install the entirety of Visual Studio, don't you? For a load of stuff. It's like the f Step number one, install this 25 gigabyte Visual Studio package and these extras and Visual C++ XYZ. And it's like, fucking hell. Then you've got to open the solution file and run it through and then it doesn't compile and it doesn't give you and like it, it assumes that you're actually the programmer in that case because you've got fish i've done this every time will i ever learn the answer is no um yeah it assumes that you're a programmer because you're in visual studio then like visual studio is assuming you're a programmer so if you get any errors it treats you as if you're going to edit the code rather than be confused as to why the code that you don't understand because you didn't write it doesn't work compared to Linux where it's basically you ain't writing the code you're just trying to get this to compile There are a lot of things that you take for granted when you use Linux that people who don't use Linux don't realize. You don't realize that they're things you can do for such a long time until you've been using Linux for a few years. Then you take them for granted, and then you realize someone else can't just do that, and you're like, "Oh shit!" This is actually like really cool and useful in a lot of situations. Just the fact that you all like. So, the fact that you always have Python installed, it's it's a send back to the old computers that always had BASIC installed. And I've had a, an IT teacher previously complain that Linux is dog shit and that it's pointless because it can't do anything, and also bitch and moan that computers these days, they just don't come with any, uh, they, they don't come with any pre-installed programming languages, so you can't, you can't just say to somebody, oh, learn programming, and they have to go away and install stuff, it's like Mac and Linux both come with Python and have done for fucking years. You open a terminal, you type Python, you are now, you have Python. On Linux, you're about three button presses away from anything. Programming, learning programming is easiest with a scripting language, obviously. You've definitely got Bash installed on uh, Linux and Mac. So it's easiest with a scripting language because you do kind of have to set up an IDE for anything that's compiled. Like, you're gonna want something pretty hefty for most compiled languages. Yes, you can just write straight C and C++ and get things done. Or Rust. Rust's probably the easiest because Cargo is amazing, but... You're going to need a load of different programs. Whereas, like, Python? Get the Python IDLE. Done. You now have code editing, a decent IDE. It's not amazing, but hey, people have written amazing stuff with it. I used it for years. I'd use it again. To be fair. You know if it wasn't copyrighted, somebody would have put Windows 10 on the AUR. You would be able to AUR install Windows 10. I was thinking after you said earlier about you don't even need to use Yay. 
how long is Yay got left? Because when I first started using Arch, it was the transition between people were saying that Yawa was out, and there was oh no, Paka, Paka, Paka Ur was out. You shouldn't be using that, but I was still using it because it was what came with my system. And you should use Yawert. And so I was using Yawert. Then I started using Yawert because I've already said you should do that. And now, then I came back to Arch after a while of using other systems. A bit of uh, Bud, um, Bud is the desktop Solus. Bit of Ubuntu, bit of Debian, bit of Debian Unstable, bit of Sid. Um, bit of everything, really. Came back to Arch. And everyone's like, nah, can't use Yawert. It's yay now. Like, oh, okay then. And now it's been about as long again. So I'm expecting yay to just cease to exist soon and everybody's going to pick another user repository tool. Oh yeah, it's not unmaintained, but at some point it's going to become unmaintained because that just seems to be the way things go. That all of the user repository tools get unmaintained rather than rather than somebody else picking up yay. It's unlikely that someone else will pick up yay. Someone else will probably just write another one. Or as soon as there's a mention of the guy go of the guy who's running Yay at the minute, maintaining it, going, ah, oh, now I can't be asked to do this anymore. Some other fucker will come in with, well, I've written one, because that's just the way that the world is. See ya. I'm pretty sure you've joined my stream multiple times and said shortly after it's time for some food. I, on the other hand, have barely eaten all day. Because I'm doing well with my life. But I tidied my room. My room is tidy on one side of it. My mum's probably going to shit herself when she comes back. And if she gets annoying, I'm going to be pissed. It's like, that's why I don't do this shit. Tell me off if I do it. And on the other hand, if I don't, if I no, if I don't do it, you'll go. Oh, you said. If I do it, you'll go. Like, Fuck off. I didn't do it because you said so. I did it because I literally couldn't get any underpants out because I couldn't walk over to me just of drawers. However, she's bitches and moans about the carpet being untidy. But it's not even untidy hidden under every carpet's not dusty at all <laughs> there's a blatant patch where it was like not even dusty because it was hidden under everything it's just the cardboard box that was dusty whereas under my table absolutely fucked mostly because like dust just get keeps getting kicked under and pushed under and that sort of shit it gets to the back
Welcome back. Yeah, you do not want these two tracks back to back as they are here, too fast. Coming through dirty on the next run just ain't going to be as good. Well, it was worth a try. Going full send at it.
Yeah, it was quick. It's just right off the track. Boom. Sick. Right, there it is. Australia. Done. Cheers.